Okay, so making a Lego fan, that's pretty easy. Gear up a motor, stick on a propeller, give it some power, and there we go, we have a fan. But how do we make it blow hot air? This is a small heating module that claims to get up to 200 degrees Celsius when we apply 12 volts. At room temperature, it's around 24 degrees, and when we apply some current from my power supply, we see the temperature slowly rise. After around 30 seconds, the module is coming in at just over 130 degrees or about 270 Fahrenheit. But to be honest, it's not radiating much heat. Really not much. And if I blow a mild current of air over it, nothing. It just feels like cool air. So what now? Well, this is nichrome wire, and this wire has an extremely high resistance. This short strand of 28 gauge wire clocks in at 5 ohms, which is a lot. Especially compared to this short strand of copper wire. Well, essentially no resistance. So, if we wrap this nichrome wire around some Lego mounts, creating a filament, and then hook up our power supply... Okay, here we go. Terrible idea. Well, we get a meltingly hot strand of wire. This is what they use in toasters and hair dryers. And surprise, surprise, Lego doesn't fare so well. But don't fret, this is not real Lego, so I don't feel guilty treating it this way. I'd never do this to real Lego. Okay, so this was dumb, and my apartment now smells awful, but I think we're onto something. In the meantime, let's build a fan. I want this fan to oscillate just a little, not as much as a regular fan, but just enough to circulate the air a bit. So this turntable should serve as a stable point from which we can mount the fan. And if we wiggle this gear around, we get an oscillating motion. Then we'll need to transfer a motion from the fan to the oscillator. So this gear connected to a cam will transfer that motion. And if we tie the two together, here we go. It wiggles back and forth. Next, we attach the motor. And a worm gear will drive the gear to the oscillator. Once we secure it, let's give it some power and test it out. Voila! By the way, if you'd like to see more of these crazy LEGO experiments, please feel free to like or subscribe. Cheers! Then we'll need a base. These rubber nipples will keep it from dancing around on the table. And the battery box will provide some weight. Once we pop the fan unit on top, now we have the beginnings of an oscillating desktop fan. And it moves just enough to circulate air while keeping it largely focused on me. Now we need some fan blades. These pieces push a surprising amount of air, so they'll do nicely. This 3 to 1 gearing will speed up the blades just enough to push a reasonable current of air. I don't want it to blow too much or it might overpower the heat that I want to create. I want just enough breeze to direct the heat onto me while I work at my desk. This anemometer tells me it's blowing somewhere around 2 meters per second from across the desk. And then finally, we'll need a cage around the fan onto which I can mount the heater. And I'll add a little wheel to the lower portion to support the weight of the heater. Now when I run it, the oscillator can run smoothly with the weight I'm about to add. But how exactly do we prevent our Lego from melting like this? Well, one way is by using these pieces. These are made of aluminium and should be able to handle the heat. Now, I'm not sponsored by MTP by the way, I just think their pieces are really cool and very helpful for builds like this. Now if I use a few of these aluminium lift arms and mount the coils on these steel bolts, now I can protect my precious Lego. And speaking of protecting precious things, I'd like to extend my gratitude to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Being sponsored by a brand that I genuinely believe in allows me to scale up my ridiculous LEGO inventions and make even crazier things. Now your online identity should be just as precious to you as my LEGO is to me. And that's where Surfshark comes in. Just as I'm building this shield for my LEGO, Surfshark is your shield for your online presence. Surfshark encrypts your connection, adding an extra layer of protection to shield you from prying eyes, just like these aluminium pieces protect my Lego. With Surfshark's clean web feature, you can block ads, pop-ups, and malware, ensuring a clean and secure online environment. 
It's kind of like filtering out these unwanted pieces from your Lego bin. Simply activate these capabilities from the Handy app. But probably my favorite feature is that Surfshark lets you bypass geographical restrictions. Want to access content from another region? Just switch your virtual location with Surfshark. Your favorite YouTuber restricts their videos? <laughs> Not anymore. Want to access the Netflix catalog from another country? Piece of cake. So whether you're building Lego inventions or navigating the online world, let Surfshark be your trusted companion. By entering my promo code LEGOJAMS, you can get an exclusive Surfshark deal of up to six additional months for free. And with a 30-day money-back guarantee, there's no risk to try it out. Thanks again to Surfshark for supporting my channel and allowing me to create even wilder inventions. Speaking of, let's make this thing hot. We'll start with some thin 28 gauge nichrome wire as a test. These steel bolts then will allow us to secure the wire a small distance away from the aluminium and plastic. So let's chuck some power through this. To start with, my room temperature seems to be around 20 degrees C. And when we turn the power on, 10 volts, 1.5 amps. Not so much according to the thermo gun, but... Okay, it's giving off a fair bit of heat. The good news though, is the wire is not heating up the steel bolts. 16 volts, little bit red. Okay, that's giving off quite a bit of heat. If we add this copper cup, we can reflect some of the heat back to the thermo gun. And we're getting just over 60 degrees. I wonder, can we toast a marshmallow? This might take a while. Nope, not yet. I guess you can brand things. Okay, let's keep going. 28. Okay, that bolt is about 33 degrees. The lift arm is about 40, 50. And it's sagging quite a bit. I think it's gonna pop. And that's my power supply maxed out. It's actually quite pretty. And we're hitting around 180 degrees above the coil. It's quite hot. Above it, it's very hot. Let's try some much thicker 22 gauge wire. This has a lower resistance at 1.3 ohms, which means we can pass a lot more current through it at a given voltage. So once we've made our coil, mounted it, and chucked on the power supply, loads of current. Bit of heat coming through. 45 to 50 watts through here. It's quite warm. 77, 78. Yeah, it's kicking off a lot of heat. 116 degrees. That is giving off a lot of heat. We're going up to 10 amps. I'm gonna stop there. Wow, that is really bright. Jeez, that is hot. That is really, really hot. That is unbelievably hot. I can't put my hand anywhere near the top of that. Good Lord. Now we're getting around 240 degrees C, or 460 Fahrenheit, at 200 watts. Ooh, that cup is hot. <laughs> Can we toast our marshmallow now? Well, looks like we can cook marshmallows on it. Mmm. Those nuts have turned black. The aluminium lift arms are about 65 degrees. The bolts are 83. But we're still only using about 200 watts and my power supply can give us 300 watts. So let's add some more coils. I'm expecting this to draw way more current. Wow. We're at nearly 10 amps, which is the maximum this power supply can output. 80 watts. There isn't enough resistance in these wires to allow us to put more voltage through it. And it's warm but it could be a lot better. Okay, this time we're going right down the middle. We'll use this slightly thinner wire and make much longer coils, which should allow us to max out the power supply somewhere just under 300 watts. Okay, let's see if this fare is any better. Now I've maxed out at 10 amps at 27.8 volts. So this is putting out about 280 watts of heat and it feels like it, that is hot. Really, really hot. Yeah, that air is quite hot. 
It's weird, it's both warm and slightly refreshing at the same time. I feel like even this alone could probably heat a small room. Now, it might not be glowing quite as bright, but don't let that fool you. This thing is unbelievably hot. Great, well, let's use some nice thick supply cables and hook this fan up. We need to supply a lot of current, so these cables should hopefully survive. And we'll manage the cables by passing them through some LEGO connector pieces, leaving just enough slack for the fan to oscillate. So, how's the temperature without running the fan? Well, after a few seconds, we're getting just under 100 degrees C. And with the fan on, we're getting a nice warm air at around 50 degrees C, which is about 120 Fahrenheit. By way of a terrible demonstration, here's some ice cream melting with just the fan on. And by 14 minutes, we have a small pool and about a third of it is melted. Then if we take a nice big blob of ice cream and use the heater, After 14 minutes, we've melted most of the blob and we have a nice pool of goopy cream. Interestingly, when the fan is blowing, the element seems to be kind of safe. It doesn't even burn this paper towel. But within seconds of turning the fan off, it immediately heats up and bursts into flame. So, is this thing safe? Well, I sure as hell wouldn't leave it unattended but it actually does a great job of blowing a nice warm breeze on these cold winter days.